don't know, Jorge. It's a lot of color, but it is the finale of Drag Race of Banya, and you gotta dress up for it. Hey, hi dolls, it's me, Will the Finger Do, with the Finger Do review of RuPaul's Drag Race Banya Season 2, the finale. Before we get started, I would like to send a big, huge thank you to Martha Grunwald. She is one of my Patreoners. She's one of my subscribers to the channel. She's always commenting. Uh, she's been a great friend. And she sent me this wig. What do we think of this wig? I wanted a little grungy pride because, well, what's the name of my fringe play? <laughs> Jorge, drink me. Oh, so not a special drink for Drag Race Espana's finale, just a bigger one. Well, that's all right. I'll take bigger <laughs> over special. Mm. So we kicked this episode off with the final four dancing for joy. No one went home, although Estrella was pretty sure she was being handed her luggage there for a minute. So was I. Then Adina couldn't help but be thrilled for her last win as the other queens congratulated her. So she should. She did a great job on that makeover. Seriously. Fact, they all did a great job, which totally deserved a top four power pose. <laughs> or is that top five? Estrella looks like she's with Dragon. Bet it's a boy she's carrying high. Speaking of Estrella, I have to say I was a little surprised to hear how cutthroat she was willing to be to win that crown. Especially after such a traveling pants sisterhood moment in the mirror not moments before. I'm done, Estrella. That's how you win. On a side note, was anyone else shocked to hear that Estrella uses super glue to hold her wigs down? Sweet beats. Let's hope it's because she wears cheap wigs and not because of a sweat issue. I mean, I'd hate for her to be a big poor gusher because big poor gusher was my drag queen name in high school. The next day, the top four were still dancing, or maybe it was too much coffee. Either way, what started out as a fond remembering of the season past became a slightly shady conversation about who the winner would be. Now, in everyone's defense, production did ask Estrella to pose the query, so if anyone's going to be blamed, I'm just saying. Right away, Benedita declared, her desire to be the first bearded queen to win on Drag Race anywhere. And that if she didn't win, she thought Sharon should. And she wasn't alone. Estrella thought Sharon was everyone's competition. But that didn't mean they all still didn't have a chance. Well said, Estrella. You need to tell yourself whatever you need to hear. Because who else is going to do it? Seriously. No, don't, don't start now. Marina made a good point. She said that while Sharon had spent half of her lifetime doing drag, Marina had been doing other things. Well, that's an excellent point to make. You know, unless those other things were drugs. Here's Supreme with this week's final maxi challenge, but can I just ask a question first? Supreme listed the prizes to be won as she does every week, and this week she said that one of the prizes was a cock cake. When did they add that? I have an issue with those two words being in a sentence. Quite frankly, I nearly passed out there. But <laughs> has that girthy gateau been there the whole time? The whole time! I don't want to know your drag queen name in high school. What were we talking about? Oh, right. The maxi challenge. The queens would be performing in a video to Supreme song, Je Vame Al Thelo. Of course... That meant that they'd be learning choreography. It also meant that they would be writing their own lyrics, but in pairs, which I find a little confusing. And then Supreme took Venedina by the arm and led her out of the workroom for a lunch date. Well, I was filled with questions. During their lunch date, Venedita told Supreme that her drag persona was born the minute she moved to Madrid. Her influences from social media and the local drag scene inspired her to move from go go boy to bearded queen but her biggest inspiration was dita von Teese. i'm shocked are you shocked i'm shocked astrea told supreme that her moment of creation was random i'm not surprised <laughs> she pretended 
to know a gaggle of drag queens to ditch some overly aggressive trade. But there must have been a deep desire to do drag in Australia somewhere because long after she ditched that guy, she was being taught the ways of the dragoon by the same three queens. And they must have taught her well because, win, lose, or draw, Estrella already saw herself as part of the Grand Hotel de la Reinas, at least as a stepping stone to her own show, if nothing else. Good for her. You go on. You go and be Britney Spears in Vegas. Sharon told Supreme that she started doing drag almost 26 years ago and that she's constantly evolving her look. And with a wide range of influences like Aretha Franklin, Shaka Khan, and Cher to draw from, it's no wonder she's a front runner for this year's crown. Seriously. Marina's conception was influenced by her love of dressing up. She had never thought to be a drag queen, but once she put her mind to it, well, Marina was born. Supreme also asked the finalists why they wanted to win. Marina said that her plan was always to win, oh, and to have a good time. Why well, she's always laughing like a donkey. Benedita thought her journey to be where she is today in the finale would give her the edge. So what? We're supposed to ignore the other three queens who journeyed here with you? That's some crust. I have to say, I like Sharon's answer. She wanted to be rewarded for the hard work and struggle that she's dedicated to the craft of drag. Well said. And well, she should. She put a lot into her drag, and she's due. Estrella wanted to win to show the world that you don't have to always be the typical beauty to get the crown, because drag is more complex than that. I was impressed by that answer. I was also impressed that of the queens, Estrella was the only one to actually take a cookie. Well, any food, actually. <laughs> and because she was the last to be interviewed, well, she took everything, including the teapot. At a girl. I would have taken a cookie too. Was it one of those cookies from Dick Waffles? Because I'd like to stick one of those in my mouth. Then the queens paired up to write their lyrics. I feel like Estrella and Benedita were psyching themselves out by overthinking this challenge. Instead of just focusing writing on their verses, they were also worried about recording, choreography, costumes. Hell, even Benedita was going on about collapsing into a coma for a week after this was all said and done. Focus, people! First, first! Come on. Speaking of writing, I'm not sure what the hell was going on with Marina with her quiet little outbursts like skin to skin or peppers. But God bless Sharon. She had wanted to work with Marina all season. Well, be careful what you wish for is all I'm saying. As much as I like Marina, she moves through the universe at a different frequency. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad frequency. It's just not one we hear from that often. Still... Marina managed to write her lyrics in 20 seconds, which pleased her. Well, as long as she's pleased. Seconds. As the queens were looking at the busy day of choreography and recording that was ahead of them, they were all grateful that on top of everything else, they weren't going to have to sing live. No one more than Benedita. She was going to rely heavily on the sound crew to work their magic on her ogre voice. Bless. And then it was on to choreography with Carmelo. And right away, Benedita was psyching herself out by saying, she has chewing gum syndrome. She can't dance, sing, and give attitude all at the same time, which is utter BS. She's been doing that and more since day one. Seriously. Just about the time that Estrella was starting to be frustrated by it all, Carmelo said they needed something else for this number. And with that, the rest of the season two queens came down the catwalk. I have to admit, having all those queens and backup dancers on the same stage was impressive. What was also impressive was that Carmelo thought any of them were ready for lifts, least of all Estrella, poor thing, but they all sucked it up and soldiered on, which surprisingly was also the name of my fringe play. <laughs> and then it was time for the main stage. Supreme looked ravishing in red. Anna Locking was festooned in pearls and nails, while Los Javis were festooned in feathers and safety pin corsets. Just not at the same time. First up, the video. It opened with Carmen Farella entering the workroom with her crown. Would someone please explain why that queen always looks wet? 
It's like she's just been pulled out of a tub drain. Seriously. Oh no, I like the video. I thought it was funny that the backup dancers handed the queen's wigs, but they weren't the ones they ended up wearing. But still, everyone looked good, and I really liked that song. I also wish that they'd fired up a smoke machine for some Atmos, because it looked a little stark in that workroom. I'm also surprised that Supreme didn't perform alongside them. She was just CGI'd into the workroom art. Then the queens and their backup dancers hit the stage to perform live in front of the judges, and then the rest of the season's cast took to the stage for the finale pose. In fact, I think that last bit they did live on the stage was the best part of the whole thing. Here's to the top four. Well done. Seriously, I enjoyed it. And then it was time for the final runway category is Best Drag. Benedita was first in a midnight blue taffeta strapless cloud of gorgeousness. I have to say, Benedita takes my breath away every time she takes that stage. She's stunning. I would have given her a finger do right away, but I think I passed out a little there for a minute. Well, she got it eventually. Marina was next, and right away she transported me back to Vogue in the 70s with that feathered headpiece. As much as I like this look, it was a little too understated for me to consider it her best drag. And I hated the headdress didn't cover the back of her head too. But I'm just being fussy. I still gave her a finger do because it was stunning. Seriously. Estrella gave us our first reveal of the evening, thank God, because she came out in a fairly boring gown. But that doesn't mean it wouldn't have been perfect on any Disney princess. And then she whipped off her skirt to show us why they call it the Magic Kingdom. I love this look, but my only complaint was that Estrella held the skirt up as she walked down the runway and it kind of revealed what was going on underneath, which ruined the surprise. I'm splitting another hair here, people, but how could I not give this a finger do? Seriously. Finally, Sharon took the stage. I still don't know what I was looking at. Her whole dress was covered in iridescent spiky paillettes. She even fashioned them into a wig, which I like because Spiky Payettes was my drag queen name in high school. <laughs> Sharon's fishtailed gown with flared sleeves also had a huge satin heart, bleeding red beadwork down the front of her. All in all, it was a showstopper and more. And that's why I gave her a finger due. Seriously. Back in the Untucked Lounge, the queens all praised each other for their sisterhood and, let's face it, helping each other in getting to this point. And as much as they all wanted to win the whole shebang, they were very happy to be in this race together. Back on the main stage, Supreme had all the season two queens walk the catwalk one more time and then drape themselves across the back of the stage. Everyone looked so fabulous, but the standouts for me were Onyx looking like a character out of Star Wars and Diamante Mary Brown's sparkly head, which had no complaints. And then Supreme announced that one of the final four would be eliminated right then and there, and the final three would continue on. Sadly, that queen was Marina. I'm not surprised personally, but Marina was clearly shocked and would clearly need some time to let it sink in. But still, here's to Marina. Well done. Good job. Top four. Enjoy it. As for the final three, they had to lip sync to Alaska E. Dinarama's Ni to Ni Nadi. Estrella went the comedy route and kept pulling objects out of her panniers that had to do with the song or eating. Benedita stripped off the greater bulk of her costume, but I wish she'd done more of a slower strip tease. Sharon's big finishing move was to remove her headpiece to reveal a long black wig. Okay. By the end of the song, it was almost a free-for-all as the queens all interacted, and by that, I mean Sharon and Benedita made out. But when it was all over, Supreme joined the queens on stage with Carmen Ferrella and the Crown and Scepter. And who was announced as the winner of season two, you ask? Well, it was Sharon. I have to say I'm very pleased that Sharon won, but I would have been happy with it being Estrella or Benedita too. They're all such fabulous queens in such different ways. Here's to Sharon. Well done, my darling. Show those youngsters what it's all about. So, what do you think? 
Did the right queen win Drag Race Hispania Season 2? Was one of the other queens robbed? What about Marina getting cut before the final lip sync? It's a little injury meeting insult there, no? Let me know what you think about this season in the comments down below. And while you're down there, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Seriously, I can't tell you enough how doing just those two things can help my channel out, seriously. And if you'd like to give me and my channel a little more support, there are links to becoming a tipper do, my Redbubble store, and my Patreon page in the description box as well. Until next time, it's me! Mwah! Seriously, Jorge. Such a good season. I am so impressed. I think that that's the first Drag Race franchise to improve upon themselves in the second season. Now, mind you, we still haven't seen Drag Race Down Under second season. Uh, Drag Race Italia still has... I still haven't finished watching Drag Race Italia season one. Um, what else is coming? Canada's Drag Race has some more changes. Uh, we've got Canada versus the world to come in. Oh, it's going to be busy, I tell you what, but... It's better to be busy than sitting around wondering what's next. <laughs> Wonder what is next.